Hey, in the last video, I showed you how to create an auto compounding bot using JavaScript. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a more flexible farming strategy. We're going to go through it step by step. I'm going to basically film this live and hopefully do zero edits so you can see exactly what the process looks like. Hope you enjoy and watch the last video so you can get the code so you can easily get started with this video. This is the exact code that you can find in the GitHub repository in my last video. So now what we're going to do is we are going to try to make this a bit more flexible. Just a reminder as to how this works, you check for compounding opportunities by checking to see how much pending Dino rewards you have received from the farm. And then you deposit those rewards into the Dino pool. So let me just show you what that looks like. So. You take your rewards in from this pool and you deposit it into the Jurassic pool. The Jurassic pool that I used is the Dino pool. So now I'll show you how you can deposit it into either the SFI pool, the UST pool, or the Opera pool. In order to deposit the Dino rewards into the pool, we need to have access to the pool contract, as you can see here with Dino pool, and the pool ABI. So the ABI is just a programming interface and the pool contract is the actual address where you can find that contract on the blockchain. So if you go on to DinoSwap and you look at the various pools, you can see they have a detail section. They have a button where you can click to view the contract. So what you need to do, you need to copy the contract ABI, which is the programming interface. Copy it all. And then I'm going to say constant um, SFI pool ABI is equal to paste. And then I want to give access to the actual contract address on the blockchain. So SFI underscore pool address. And as we can see, this is the address here. So I just click copy and that's the address. All right, so now I have both the pool address and I have the pool contract. I need to create an instance to that object using Web3. So I can say constant dino, won't be dino, sorry, SFI pool contract is equal to new web3.eth.contract. And I pass in the pool ABI and the um, pool address. So I named it address, which probably is a better name, but just to stay with my naming function, I'm just going to rename it to contract. All right, cool. So that works. So now once I have that pool contract, I need to then replace Dino pool with that particular contract. So that contract, I can actually find it right here. So how this works, I'm saying that if the pending Dino is more than the transaction cost multiplied by four, I then say, okay, yes, you can compound. And I then send the amount to compound, the contract to compound it to, and the gas price that I calculated to know the transaction cost. And once I send that, once I change this pool contract here, the rest of the code will work. So will work as it was working before. So all I need to do is just change the contract I like to send the, the dyno to. So I'm going to do it right now. I'm going to say FSI contract, because that's the contract object. And yeah, that's it. So now if I go to run my code. Oh, one thing we have to do is we have to approve Dino for this particular pool because it isn't approved right now. So if I click approve, allow Dino. All right, so transaction has been confirmed. All right, so now that's approved and now this should be ready to be able to handle your code. And now we are going to run the code. So I'm gonna go to my terminal and go to the directory where this code lives. Then I'm just going to run node index. And what this should do now, it should take out my check to see how much dino I have at the moment in my dino farm. Then it would start compounding it by withdrawing that dino, depositing it, depositing it into the new Jurassic pool. 
And by the being by the boom, I have a new compounding strategy. So now I'm flexible. I could decide, depending on what the weather is like, if I would like to deposit my tokens into the Dino pool, into the FSI pool, and alternatively the Arbor pool and UST pool. Hmm. Why did that transaction fail? So I'm going to look at the transaction and see why this transaction failed. Deposit dino error has been reverted. All right, cool, no problem. Whenever I have anything that fails and I don't get proper logs here on Etherscan, which is normal, I go onto something called Tender Tenderly, and it helps you get proper error messages for your smart contract. So you can see exactly where it failed and which method was called. So I really love this platform. So definitely check it out. Out of gas. Oh, because the gas limit required for the transaction was not enough. So let's increase our gas limit. And since we're increasing the gas limit, let me send it in. Here and here. So how gas works is that each transaction requires a certain amount of gas. And how the gas price works is how much you're paying per, like let's say, liter of gas. So if this contract requires 100,050 liters of gas and I'm not giving it that much, it will always fail no matter how high the gas price is. So the gas limit is very important. Never underestimate it. It's better you overestimate it. So I've changed it in my code to be 200,000 and see if that works. All right, so run that again. Mm. Ah, it's done. Perfect. Let me show you exactly in the dinosaur pool that it has now deposited into SFI. So if I refresh, so here you can see my staked dinos are now 0 0.003. So if you are swapping in between Dino and SFI and UST, what's going to happen is that you're going to have some Dino tokens accumulating here in these other pools whilst you're not actively putting the Dino tokens back in. So we're going to have to excavate this ever so often as well and restake it back into Dino or into SFI, like whatever we so desire. So that can be another way how you extend this code. If you want to see me do that, let me know in the comments below. Now we've successfully updated our code so that it's a bit more flexible. We can choose whether we want to use the Dino pool or the FSI pool. Now you will have to go back into the code to hard code to see which one you want to do. You can even do it so that you can accept a command at the start when you're running your code to say which one you prefer. So you can start and stop and say Dino or you can say SFI um, based on a required input. Um, you can build a front end for this code if you want to. But now that we are depositing into this pool, the Dino tokens are not being excavated. So you're going to have to excavate it and also put it back into Dino or into SFI. It depends on your flavor. So if you'd like to see a video of me doing that, let me know what I will do. Um, or I'll definitely add it to my list. Thank you so much for watching this video. Don't forget to share it with a friend. Leave me a comment. I enjoy reading your comments so far and I'm definitely replying to every single one. So I will see you in the next video and in this channel. Don't forget we are learning, coding and earning together. So see you in the next one.